Dear friends, welcome to the Sunday Reach by the Dominican Friars of India. Today we see Jesus in the temple, the magnificent Jerusalem temple where he is teaching. And he observes all the people there, including the leaders of the people of Israel. And there's a little contrast between him and the other leaders there. Of course, those leaders were well dressed in colors according to their rank. And here is Jesus like a villager standing there just wearing his normal tunic. And maybe there's a shawl around him, I do not know. Nothing more. And he's addressing the people. But the people are listening to Jesus more willingly than to the leaders of the Jewish people. And today he is telling everyone something very, very important, which actually the leaders should hear more than the others. What does he say? He said, beware of the scribes who like to go about in long robes and, have, and to have salutations in the marketplaces and the best seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at feasts, who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. Well, we can't but think of our present situation in the church. We have a lot of things to think about as we hear Jesus speaking these harsh words, but true words to the Jewish people. The church very often becomes a place like the Temple of Jerusalem, a place for show. We build a church spending huge amount of money in a country like India. Of course, we are not as poor as we were when the British were here. But even today, there are so many poor people. At least 70% of the people of India are not rich and some 40% are below the poverty line, if my statistics are right. But there is a lot of poverty in this country. But there is a lot of show and pomp and celebration everywhere. In the church, in our buildings, in our celebrations, there is a lot of waste of wealth which could have been used for something better. And so the words of Jesus, very much applicable to us. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, thank God for a change, decided that we need a church of the poor for the poor. And we know what all things he has done. He has given away his beautiful limousine and he is traveling in a small little car. When he was the Argentina, in Argentina, the Archbishop there of Buenos Aires, he used to travel by public bus very often or most often. He removed the red carpet under his uh, big chair in Vatican. And he lives in San Martha. And he asks people to live like Jesus of Nazareth and his disciples. How many are listening? And he also told the shepherds that they should have the smell of the sheep. At least they should know the smell of the sheep. Now, if the shepherd always travels in a, an air-conditioned, uh, huge, beautiful, comfortable car and never gets into a public transport bus, how can he have the smell of the sheep that he is leading today? Unfortunately, very few of our leaders have taken up this message of Pope Francis to live a life of simplicity, a life like that of Jesus and the disciples. Unfortunately, we have put on a lot of emphasis on external show and our interior is becoming shrunk. <clears throat> there is not much place for Jesus, for God in the church, unfortunately, very often. Instead, there is a lot of place for showing off what is brilliant, what is glorious, what is colorful. We need to think about this in our church. If the church is to be saved from 
the top to bottom, we need to have a total transformation. We must become more and more Christ-like and these words are very much applicable to us. And then look what is happening next. Lot of rich people are putting in lot of money into the treasury. Big coins are dropped into the metal treasury with making a lot of sound. And people look who is putting money. Oh, so much money he is putting. And the person who puts more is surely praised or at least considered to be someone great. And quietly at that moment comes a poor widow, puts in two small copper coins into the treasury. People do not notice her, <clears throat> but the one who notices her is Jesus. And Jesus tells the disciples to notice her. See this woman. She has put in all she has. She has put in more than all the money that is put in by the rich. The poor widow is an inspiration for us. Of course, she could have used those two copper coins to buy something for herself and her family. But I tell you, the church, especially the missionary church, is supported by poor widows even today. I remember as a student in Nagpur Seminary uh, in St. Dominic's Ashram, our um, priest in charge, Father Noel Maloy, during the conference about poverty, once told us, you know, brothers, you must be very careful in using our resources. We do not have much money. We are poor Dominicans. And the expenses that you have, that we have here is huge because it's a formation house. And you know who sends this money? Some poor widow often misses a meal and saves that money and that way gathers some amount and sends it to us. That is how our mission work is going on. That really affected us very much. We became more careful about not wasting anything, especially food and other things. And that is how we have been brought up. And thank God, I tell you, even today the Dominicans are not rich. I can tell you that. While so many other congregations, they have more money and enough, enough and more to spare, we live from hand to mouth. Thank God, it's a gift that God has given us. And you look around, you see the missionaries of charity founded by Mother Teresa. They are an example, really. Very glaring example, we can say, glaring into our minds and into our lives, how they live in utter poverty and in utter simplicity. Into their convents you enter, there is no show of any wealth or riches there. You go to some other congregations, the provincial houses or general aid, and you'll see what a magnificent buildings, what kind of flooring, what kind of furniture, my goodness. And they are poor religious who take the vows of poverty, chastity and obedience. You go to a convent of the Mother Teresa sisters, the missionaries of charity, you don't find any of these things, but you find people who are happy, people who smile, people who look after the poor, people who are ready to dirty their hands. They have the smell of the sheep. Do we have the smell of the sheep? This question is to be asked by all of us to ourselves. We who are leaders in the church, we who proclaim the gospel, we who think we are preaching the gospel, are we living the gospel? What's wrong with our church? Why the Sunday attendance is dropping? And hardly people come to the church nowadays. Why? What's wrong with us? Well, everything is wrong with us because we have left the gospel path which Jesus has taught. It's a moment for all of us to take up the challenge from the topmost authorities, the hierarchy, uh, to the lowest level rank of uh, hierarchy there. We need to think about our life. We have to return to the gospel. We have to return to Jesus and the apostles. In the 12th, 13th century, St. Dominic and St. Francis Assisi, they started once again to come back to the original apostolic life. They said, Vita Apostolica. Like the apostles, they tried to live after 13 centuries. Now, so many more centuries have passed. Can we ever think of returning to the apostolic life? I tell you, nothing will be lacking. That poor widow who put in two copper coins, I'm sure 
God provides. God provided her. God provides even today. If we trust in Him and follow the gospel, God provides. Nothing will be lacking to you. Jesus has assured us. Dear friends, it's time for us to think seriously about saving ourselves and the church. God bless you.